Hi, this video is about a new software update for the OpenSprinkler. So OpenSprinkler is an open source, Arduino based, web enabled sprinkler valve controller. This is the first major software upgrade since its original release in October last year. A number of new features have been added in this new version, um, and it is compatible with all existing versions of the OpenSprinkler hardware. This video is to give you a uh, brief in overview of these new features. For more details, please uh, visit www.opensprinkler.com. The new software is called the Interval Program with firmware 1.6. When you type in the uh, controller's IP address, you will see the home page, which shows menu links on the top, followed by the firmware version and device time. Um, and next, a program preview button. If you click on it, you will see a plot of the program, which I will explain shortly. Um, and then the status of each station. Um, so if a station is running, it shows which program is running and the remaining water time. If a, a station is scheduled to run but not running yet, you will see the scheduled water time. Down from that, you will see the controller status, including operation, rain delay, rain sensing status, uh, the sequential mode, and a last run record which shows information about the station that ran most recently. At the bottom of the home page, you will see a list of control buttons, including start, stop operation, switch to manual mode, rain delay, and reboot. To use any of these buttons, you need to put in the password first. The default password is open door. Now let me go to the options page. Here you see a list of editable options including the time zone, number of extension boards, master station, sequential mode, rain sensor, and your current location. You can also change the password if you want. Extension boards and master station are features already supported in the previous software version. Basically, you can expand the number of uh, stations by linking extension boards, and you can designate any of the first eight stations as a master station. The sequential mode is a new feature. By default, it's checked, which means the controller will run stations sequentially, one after another. If you uncheck this option, the controller will run stations in parallel, or in other words, concurrently. If you have a rain sensor installed, you can check the Use Rain Sensor option. This allows the controller to shut off stations when rain is detected by your rain sensor. If you uncheck this option, the controller will bypass the rain sensor reading. Going back to the home page, let me now click on the program link. This will bring up the program page. You can see a list of existing programs. You can add a new program, delete or modify any existing program, and preview the program schedules. Let me now add a new program so you can see the basic elements of a program. First, you need to select uh, days. It can be a weekly schedule or an interval schedule. For a weekly schedule, um, you can additionally select uh, an odd day or even day restriction. For interval schedule, you can put in any interval of two days or more and the starting day. For example, every three days with a zero starting day means the program will apply today and every third day from today. A starting day of two means the program will apply the day after tomorrow and every third day from then. Next, select the set of stations that the program will apply to. And finally, um, input the start time, the end time, the interval time during the day, and the duration time. Basically, the program will begin at the start time, repeat at every interval time until the end time. So in this particular example, I've set the program to start at 8 a.m., water every station for 20 minutes and 30 seconds, repeat every 6 hours, and stop after 5 p.m. If you want the program to run only once during the day, you can put in an early end time or a long interval time to make sure the program doesn't run more than once a day. When I'm all set, I will click on the Submit button put in my password, and the program is now added. Now, because you can add multiple programs, it is important to understand how the programs are executed. 
basically at every minute, the software scans through the programs stored in memory and finds all whose time settings match the current time and day. When a program match is found, the associated stations and the duration time will be added to a list of scheduled stations. If multiple programs are matched at the same time, they are all inserted into the list. Once this is done, the software will start running the scheduled list until it's completed. So you may have noticed that each program uses the same duration time for all the selected stations. Now if you want different water time uh, for each station, but with the same time settings, you can do so by uh, simply adding new programs. Let's say I want to run stations 1 through 8 uh, every Tuesday and Friday, uh, starting from 6 a.m. with a 6 hour interval, but I want stations 1 through 4 to uh, run uh, 20 minutes uh, each, but stations 5 through 8 to run 5 minutes each. I can do so by creating two programs. This is the first program which applies to stations 1 through 4, so I will uh, first add this program. And then I will add another program with exactly the same time settings, um, except that this applies to stations 5 through 8 with a 5 minutes uh, uh, duration time. So I, after I add both programs, this will do exactly what I want. Um, this firmware version allows a maximum of 64 programs to be added, so it's pretty flexible. To verify if your programs are set correctly, I highly recommend using the uh, program preview feature. When you click on the preview button, you will see a graphical plot of the program. By default, you will see today's program. Each column corresponds to every station, and these colored bars indicate the blocks of time during the day that every station is uh, scheduled to run. The current time is indicated by this pink line here. You can also check the schedule of a different day by putting in the day, month, and year in the HTTP link. For example, to check the 22nd of the same month and year, I can just put in day D equal 22nd, and then this shows the program preview of that day. This program preview feature is implemented by a software simulation using the same algorithm that the controller software uses. So what you see here exactly matches how the controller will execute the programs during that day. So it's a handy tool to uh, visualize your program settings and help identify mistakes in your program settings. In the program preview plot here, you have probably noticed that the stations are scheduled to run sequentially, one after another. This is when the sequential mode is set to yes. Now if you uncheck this option, and commit the change, uh, then uh, come back to the uh, preview plot, you will see that the controller now uh, allows stations to run concurrently. Uh, so any station can turn on at any time. Uh, and this may be useful in cases uh, where you want multiple stations to run at the same time. Another new feature is the integrated menu mode. At the home page, if I put in my password and click on the switch to menu button, the controller will now switch from program mode to menu mode. At this time, the stations will be reset and the programs will stop running. Instead, the home page will show a list of buttons that I click to uh, manually turn on or turn off a station. The menu mode will bypass password, so you don't have to put in password anymore. Also, when I turn on a station, I can put in an optional timer value, so the controller will turn off the station after that amount of time. Amount of the default timer value is zero, which means the station will remain on until you click it to turn off. When I'm done with the menu mode, I can click on the menu off button to go back to the program mode. Next, let me briefly explain the weather feature that is going to be available in the future. At the home page, when I click on the weather link, it will bring up a new page that shows the current weather information at the location that I set in the options page. I can change this to a different cities, including international cities. The return page uh, is actually a simple HTML page that the microcontroller can easily parse to extract the local weather data. 
it is implemented by using a Python script and the Google uh, Weather API installed on the Race Hobby server. This feature will allow the microcontroller to periodically get weather data and adjust the weather schedules accordingly. Again, this feature is uh, going to be available in the future. Uh, it's not available right now, but at least the pieces that are necessary to implement it are all wired into the software setup. The last feature I want to explain is the direct HTTP commands. Some users have asked whether it's possible to bypass the user interface, but instead send HTTP requests directly. The answer is yes, because the web interface is implemented using HTTP a GET command. So you can simply use uh, HTTP links to send requests to the controller. For example, I can get the current status of a station by typing in the IP address followed by the station name. This will return a binary number that shows the status of the station. I can similarly set the status of the station by assigning the station name to a value, and this will uh, allow me to turn on or turn off a station uh, directly through the link. You can find a list of useful commands that has been implemented in OpenSprinkler on the OpenSprinkler usage instructions page. For the complete list, please refer to the source code. Finally, to find out how to reprogram your OpenSprinkler with the new firmware, please follow the reprogramming instructions on the OpenSprinkler webpage. So this concludes the video. Um, thanks for watching.